Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Anthonia. I'm a third year medical student studying in the UK. And on my channel, I make videos about medicine, university, and pretty much anything else that comes into my head. So if that sounds good to you guys, then feel free to subscribe down below for more videos. So today I thought I'd make a video about good resources for the first couple of years of medical school. So essentially um, at my medical school and lots of medical schools I've heard of, the first couple of years are just preclinical. So you're not really in placement or in hospital that much. You're learning about anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathophysiology, just like all the science parts behind medicine. And then you're eased into placement or you're thrown into placement depending on how your university works. So I just thought I'd go through some of my favourite textbooks and resources that I used in my first couple of years of med school. I hope you guys enjoy this video. A couple of disclaimers before I get into this video. First one, each university and each medical school are very different to you know, the next medical school. So if your university has specified books that you should read or that you have to read, for example, go and read those books first, prioritise those books. Your lecturers and course directors write reading lists with your specific course in mind. So if your textbooks are completely different to the ones I'm about to show you, then go for those first and use these only if you feel you need to. Also, with textbooks, I feel my number one golden rule is don't buy a textbook unless you A, have to, or B, are sure that you'll use it and that you learn well from it. So the majority of these books I'm showing you, I actually personally don't own. I've taken them out from the library because being a student means you're broke all the time and the library has all, almost all the textbooks that you'll need. The only courses I know that actually it doesn't really work like that and that you need to buy textbooks every single year is law. I just say go to the library and take out books and at least try them and see whether you'd need them. If you feel like you need them and like them, then go and buy textbooks. So just a little disclaimer as well. If the lighting is changing pretty erratically in this video, I apologise. I is literally just doing it now. I'm using natural light to film this video because it was really nice and sunny when I set out to film this, but it's been going cloudy and then sunny, cloudy and then sunny. Because I live in the UK, our weather is pretty erratic anyway. But yeah, let's get into this video. So the first book I'm gonna tell you guys about today is one of the holy grails of medical school. I'd heard of this book before I even applied for medical school, so it shows how popular it is, and it is Totora's Principles of Anatomy and Physiology. So um, it's often referred to as Totora because for some reason people refer to some medical textbooks as the name of the author who wrote it as opposed to the actual name. But yeah, Totora. Again, I hope you guys can see this because um, I'm filming in front of my window so the light might be reflecting off. This, I don't own this book. This is actually a library book that I'm holding right now. I personally like Totora because it really takes you through the basics of anatomy and physiology. It's organized by a system. So my course is taught in a system based way, whereas I know that other universities aren't taught that way. But for me, it really worked because it matched the curriculum that I was learning. It gives you a lot of detail at times. So sometimes you may not need the detail. Sometimes you may need the detail. So it's about applying it correctly to your course, but I found Totora to be really, really good for anatomy and physiology. So the next book and resource I'm gonna show you in this video is another really, really popular one that you probably may have heard of, and that is Grey's Anatomy for Students. So I'll try and set a picture up here of the actual textbook, because I don't have it anymore. I returned it to the library, but I actually do have the flashcards as well. So Grey's Anatomy for students, not Grey's Anatomy. I made this mistake and reserved just Grey's Anatomy in my first year. And when I got it, Grey's Anatomy is like this big and it's very, very, very technical. Didn't understand it at all. The Grey's Anatomy for students, it does what it says on the tin. It's an anatomy textbook or flashcards like I've got here. It's really, really detailed. So it gives you loads of really, really nicely drawn out diagrams with everything labeled, and then gives you some backstory to, you know, like the origin and the insertion points of muscles, for example. Grey's Anatomy is um, organized into body parts. So instead of having it the gastrointestinal system, for example, you'd have the abdomen, 
the thorax, etc, etc. So if I was in the gastrointestinal system, then I would go and look for the abdomen part of the book, or I'd look for the abdomen flashcard in my flashcard set and just use those to refer to the gastrointestinal anatomy. I actually really enjoyed using the Grey's Anatomy um, textbook, but I have loved using the Grey's Anatomy flashcards. I'll just show you guys an example of one. So it's on the right atrium, as you can see. So we've got the side of the heart that's shown and you've got the numbers pointing to different structures. And then on the back, you can see that we've got all the structures like have labeled there. They have this bit called in the clinic, which I really like. So it gives you a key fact about the body part that you're looking at. I really enjoyed the structure of these flashcards because it just meant that I could test myself or I could get a friend or even family members to test me on my knowledge of the anatomy. I found it was a really good way of learning as well because with anatomy, in my opinion, I feel like it's a lot of rote learning. So having it in these kind of bite-sized flashcards made it a lot easier to learn systems of anatomy. My third book on this list, I don't have with me because I returned it back to the library, but I'll try and insert a picture here. It's called Lippincott's Physiology. Again, another book that's normally referred to as just Lippincott's at least at my med school. It's a physiology textbook that just takes you step by step through different um, functions in the body, or different mechanisms in the body. I found that for some aspects of physiology, Totora either was a bit too detailed for me or I just didn't understand it from Totora or from lectures. So I'd go into Lippincott's physiology and it was really good at just taking you step by step through certain mechanisms in the body and giving you nice diagrams and so you can visualize what's going on as well. So I really enjoyed that textbook. It really laid down the foundations for certain systems in the body. At my medical school, first year was predominantly anatomy and physiology, biochemistry, genetics etc etc and then second year we moved into pathophysiology so this might not be exactly the same at your medical school you may do pathophysiology a bit earlier a bit later but the next two textbooks i'm going to tell you about are really good for pathophysiology the next one is kumar and clark's clinical medicine so this is the eighth edition i know there's a newer edition out but um, this is the one that they had left in the library when I went to go and look for it. Again, it's called Kumar and Clark's normally because Kumar and Clark are the surnames of the authors of this book and I just find it really, really good. I was told about this book at the end of first year when I was asking for textbooks for second year and this book is really good for pathophysiology. It goes into a good amount of detail for the pathophysiology of the majority of the main diseases that you'll come across in clinical practice or in like lectures basically. It really takes you step by step from the epidemiology, so how common or rare the disease is, all the way down to management and treatment, which at my medical school we don't really focus on until third year, but again, it's just good to have that knowledge as well. So as you can see, Kumar and Clark's is a really, really big textbook. So if you want anything a bit more portable, which I often did, especially when it got to revision, they actually do have a small version of their book. It's just called The Essentials of Clinical Medicine. It's essentially everything that's inside this book, but condensed into a little pocket-sized version. So it goes through the main diseases from epidemiology all the way down to treatment. And it also does dip into a bit of physiology as well, which is quite nice to make sure that you're linking from the physiology from like first year or the basic foundation level all the way up to the pathophysiology. So I really, really enjoyed this book. I'm actually going to buy this book because these are both um, library books. And yeah, I found them really, really useful. The last book I'm going to talk about in this video is called The Flesh and Bones of Medicine. So this book was probably the most recommended book I had by my friends in old years. They said that this book was amazing for the foundations of what you need to know for pathophysiology. Essentially what this book does is go through system by system all the main diseases just like Kumar and Clark's but it's in a bit less detail so if you want to just have a bit of an overview of a topic or if you're just trying to make sure that you have a good foundation in each topic and then you can pick your details later this is really really good. Like I said it's organised into systems which is the way that my school teaches so um, I found that you know if I was doing the GI system I'd flick to the GI sections in this book and just kind of make sure that I understand the basics and fill in whatever my medical school wants me to know extra. So yeah, I really, really liked this book. This is another book that, you know, is from the library, but my friend did actually give it to me, a lovely fifth year who didn't need it anymore, gave me a book as well so I can highlight in it as well. 
and yeah i'd really really recommend it because it's you know notably thinner than the rest of the textbooks i've shown you today but it does cover pathophysiology quite well and that brings us to the end of the video if you liked these textbooks and if you like this video then please give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends who are maybe starting medical school or going into their second year of medical school and yeah if you have any video suggestions that you'd like to see from me feel free to leave it down in the comment section below subscribe share like and i'll see you guys in the next video bye